Welcome to Second Sake, the show that focuses on the issues behind the news. Mining Weekly editor Martin Quima joins me today to unpack the latest in the mining industry. Hi Martin. Hi Sushni. Now, there seems to be a preference for recycled PGMs rather than mined PGMs. You know, it's all this emission story. People are trying to cut down on emissions. So they see mines generating emissions when they mine. They then compare it to recycling. They find out with the recycling and bringing back from recycling, the emissions are like 90% lower. So, you know, they are all under the spotlight. So you might be a car manufacturer. They're saying, well, how many emissions did you emit? Mm. So they want to cut that down. So now they're saying, gee, I would rather get recycled platinum group metals than mined platinum group metals. Now, this is an issue which we should deal with fast because we don't recycle here. So you almost have mining outside the country. It was disappointing that the government of South Africa never said that when we produce cars here, we must stop the exhaust fumes by using our own platinum group metals. They never went to that length which is very disappointing, mm -hmm. which they should have done. They haven't done so. So we haven't got a recycling benefit here. So the preference could be that you, you'll absorb all the recycled metals before you start looking at the mined metals. And you might pay a premium for those recycled metals. We're seeing green aluminium is already fetching a premium on the normal price. So it's, it's a situation where I think the mines should look at themselves and say, we must cut down on our emissions. Mm. We mustn't have pyrometallurgy. We know that there is hydrometallurgy. As we go forward, we must cut down on our own emissions so that our metals are also as green as green can be when they're mined. Mm. And that'll be good competition for what is outside there. Now, the International Council on Mining and Metals is now putting a focus on aluminium, copper, silicon, steel, to accelerate the circular economy. You see, everybody's thinking circular economy of the world, except us. <laughs> so we mustn't think, okay, the circular economy has become important to us in South Africa. The problem is we are involved outside South Africa with our metals and minerals. Mm -hmm. Outside of South Africa, it's becoming all important. Everybody is working on this. They see it as the way of conforming uh, with the Paris Agreement, mm -hmm. They see it as a way of cutting down on global warming. So it's extremely important to them. So you see now the International Council of Mining and Metals uh, saying we're going to zero in on certain metals, the metals that are involved with solar panels, the metals that are involved with uh, wind turbines. We're going to be involved in how we create a recovery of those metals and minerals. And they zoning in you know, on the aluminium, on the copper, on the silicon, on the steel. That's a start, mm -hmm. you know. But look at the companies that are involved there with the ICMM, the South African companies listed on the Johannesburg Stock Exchange. You know, we've got a lot of them that are members that are actually funding all this. So they will actually really have to take note of this. You know, African Rainbow Minerals, Anglo-American, Glencore, Goldfields, Sibanya Stillwater, South 32. They're all going to have to take this very seriously where, wherever they are in the world. So it will affect us here as well. But I, I do think that we should be more conscious as South Africans of what's happening in that circular economy. It is vigorous and they see it as a big my, uh, business opportunity. Mm -hmm. <coughs> and they see it as a business opportunity that also protects Mother Earth. So they're killing two birds with one stone. Now, you mentioned Sabanya. They are funding a Wits University carbon storage brainstorming techathon. I had never heard of a brainstorming <laughs> techathon until I got the call from Wits. And again, what is it around? It's around our emissions. So everyone is thinking, they're trying to get students and everybody thinking along this line mm -hmm. of, you know, how do we protect the environment? So absent in South Africa, which is a very big mining country, is what is being done elsewhere in the world as well. And that is taking the carbon that you emit and storing it in underground mines. Uh, it's a bit difficult for me to grab this concept, and I think that's why you know, brainstorming <laughs> will be very good. 
but he says it's like having a swimming pool underground and, and you, you get the, you know, the carbon dioxide and it stays, I don't know how it stays in there, but this is what they're planning, that you, you, you get to the situation where you, you're getting rid of your carbon, it's going to stay underground mines, we've got a lot of deep underground mines here, as we don't work in certain tunnel areas, mm -hmm. that's how I understand it, they're going to use that for storing uh, this carbon, as they call it, and they want everybody to have a say on this. They feel that if they have a brainstorming session, they're going to come up with innovation and they're going to come up with a lot of exciting things and involving the students, but involving everyone, anyone who wants to take part. The date hasn't been set yet and it is funded by Sabanya Stillwater. So, you know, they're also conscious of all these things. They know that you've got to do something around stopping carbon emission. And I think this brainstorming will make us more conscious of that. Thanks for speaking with us, Martin. It's a great pleasure, Sashni. That's it for today. Join us again next week for more news analysis on the local and global mining industries. To subscribe to Crema Media's Engineering News and Mining Weekly, please email subscriptions at cremamedia.ca.za.